Welcome to the St. Michael Fall podcast series. My name is Andrew Grosso, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is, God is doing a new thing. Following our 75th anniversary celebration, St. Michael is refreshed and renewed for a bright future. Now God is calling us to make new commitments in our faith and in our community. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Our reading today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, beginning at verse 25. Paul and Silas were arrested, flogged, and thrown into prison. About midnight they were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Here ends the reading. One of the things we see happening in this story has to do with reconciliation. Paul and his companions have come to Philippi, a Roman colony in Macedonia. They are far from home, preaching the gospel in a foreign land. When some of the local citizenry take offense to Paul's preaching, they seize Paul and Silas, beat them, and throw them into prison without a trial. The jailer puts them in the most secure cell in the prison and fastens their feet in stocks. In light of this rough treatment, it would not seem unreasonable for Paul and his companions to feel a bit angry with the Philippians. But when the Lord frees them from captivity, they use the opportunity they've been given to pursue reconciliation with one of those responsible for their mistreatment. Not only do they not try to escape, they offer the good news of salvation to their jailer, and he and his entire family end up being baptized. By pursuing reconciliation, Paul and his companions took a situation marked by suspicion and enmity and turned it into an occasion for salvation and amity. But even as they pursued reconciliation, Paul and his companions insisted on responsibility and justice. Paul and his companions were Roman citizens, and when the leaders of Philippi learned they had contravened Roman law by unjustly beating and imprisoning Roman citizens, They tried to cover up their misdeed. They asked Paul and his companions to leave town quietly and let bygones be bygones. But Paul insisted the Philippians acknowledge what they did. So the magistrates of the city came and pronounced Paul and his companions free to go and apologized to them for having mistreated them. Real reconciliation does not oppose mercy and justice. Rather, real reconciliation recognizes that mercy and justice go together. Our theme this fall season is God is doing a new thing. And sometimes, some of God's most amazing work happens when we pursue reconciliation in our lives. Reconciliation can be difficult because it usually requires dealing with relationships or situations that are marked by suspicion and enmity. Oftentimes, there may be good reasons for us to be suspicious or to feel estranged from others. But reconciliation is one of the principal ways the power of the gospel is manifest in the world. This is something Paul knew not only because of his experience in Philippi, but in other places where he helped establish Christian communities. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes that God has both reconciled us to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We share in the new thing God is doing by doing what God himself is doing, namely pursuing reconciliation. 
Sometimes this will require us to demand justice. Sometimes this will require us to offer mercy. Most times, real reconciliation requires us to do both. And this means allowing others to demand justice from us, even as they offer mercy to us. Reconciliation is hard work, but it's one of the ways that God brings about a new creation. Oftentimes we will ask God to do some new thing in our lives, but sometimes God shows us that before we move forward, we have to go back and work to bring about transformation in a situation we may have been trying to ignore. So let us give thanks for the ministry of reconciliation with which we have been entrusted, and let us pray for the grace to be effective ministers of reconciliation so that we may share in the work God is doing to bring about a new creation. Amen. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 